It's Thursday, July 21st, and we're chasing the runner. Previously on The Runner. Hit it. Chaser, to give you a little insight on unicorns. Definitely have never encountered one because I'm still here today. You can see right through. Nice. Runner All Stars, first out of the gate, second day in a row. You guys are not going to catch me because I'm a unicorn. You can't find me. You can't see me. I'm mystical. What's her hat called? Beaumont Ranch. Beaumont Ranch is closed for a private event today. Really? So. Beaumont Ranch? Here we go! Saddle up, pal girl. Time to go catch us a unicorn. Hey everyone, I'm Matt Pat, and this is day 21 of The Runner. There are only 10 days left to capture The Runner. We've got a special graphic for it and everything. That is how exciting this moment is today. And anything, literally anything can happen between now and then. Yesterday, the chase began at a candy shop in Austin, Texas, and ended in a thrilling fashion in the beautiful little town of Grandview, Texas. But how beautiful was it for the chasers? Are they still as strong as ever? And how well is the runner adapting to living in this daily pressure cooker we call a chase? Yesterday was a checkpoint day, so for a runner as new as this one, it could have been a very serious trial by fire. So let's find out how it went right now. Day two of being the runner. I am on the road right now, heading to Grandview, Texas, uh, going to some farm out there. My imagination is definitely playing with me right now. Like, I just get excited about the unknown. We don't know anything about this runner. The only thing we know is unicorns. Unicorns, she wears a hoodie, and Texas when it's 100 degrees. So. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so we know she's obviously pretty bright. That's it. Maybe since she likes unicorns so much, she has a unibrow. Or like she wears a unitard, like a uniform unitard. Since she's by herself, she makes all her decisions unilaterally. Beauty! Coming at you. All the things that are at this ranch, there's zip lining, cattle drive, horseback, shooting clay, roping, and archery. There's ATV tour. Maybe they have moves. Oh, she tried to jump on an ATV. Shoot something. I'll jump on a damn ATV right after. Oh, me too. I you're going to get away? I don't think you so. You know I don't know how to drive this. I love those things. Woo! In her defense, unicorns are very awesome. Non-existent. They're gonna, they're they're gonna, non-existent. That doesn't mean they're not awesome. Han Solo's non-existent, but he's awesome. Six minutes, you guys. The excitement starting to settle in finally uh, because we're getting close to our destination. We are trying to find this helicopter right now. We kind of have to go with the gut a little bit. Oh yeah, we got a helicopter. The helicopter can only get you so far. You must perform a tandem skydive. From 8,500 feet to gain entry to the estate. That, but yes, we are racing down country roads uh, to the Beaumont Ranch. I believe we're about a mile away um, and hoping that the runner is still here, still on location. Country roads! Beaumont Ranch, there's a sign! Beaumont Ranch, we're here! Is it our bags all closed up, ready to go? Yeah. Beaumont Ranch, home of the unicorn runner. We'll jump on a horse, catch that unicorn, put her in her cage. Our way. None of it is that well wooded. The trees here aren't that thick. Right. So we should be able to spot any unusual activity. And I'm looking. You gotta be diligent out here. Ah! Alright, 
now that you're ready to run? Not really, but we're going to. I would be totally discouraged on this long ass dirt path if you weren't here too. Oh my god. It's the scariest thing in the world. I don't know if this is just part of an exhibit or if she was here. I don't see any runner stuff. Alright, are well, you ready to go land this thing? Yeah, let's do it! Okay, let's go. Maybe we can get a car if it's done. Finally coming here in a vehicle! We need a golf cart, let's go. I know. I think they might all be taken. I feel like she'd be doing some sort of farm vehicle. Let me take the tractor to the getaway car. Finale key is buried under these heavy bales of hay. First, use the checkpoint key from Houston, the ignition key, to start up the tractor and move the bales out of the way. Then use the checkpoint key from San Antonio, the tactical shovel, to dig where X marks the path. Find the container, okay. Sweating like programmers at a train depot. Oh my gosh, there's snakes. There's poop everywhere. It's dead. No golf carts left. There's only limited ones. We come on. We're right on the go. Car, come on. Oh, I don't like this. Raphael. Go ahead. You can't really do that, for real? You really want to start that beef? All right, Raph. Raphael. They don't belong to anybody. That's really dirty. I don't it's care. Like dirty. They don't belong to anybody, man. I already kicked us off. Stole our golf car. You want to? That's why you're broke. Let's go! I can't believe you just did that. Who are you? I'm a man after 30K! You 
use a provided padlock key. And there's six teams. That's right. Yeah. So why didn't you get it originally? Because there were none left when we got here. And why is that my problem? Well, what, what's your problem? My problem is that you just waited till we got off the golf carts the one time. Yeah, hell yeah. This is it's free golf carts. It's not Bravo Square written on it just as much as it's not Friend Zone written on it, just as much as it's not Sweet and Savage written on it. It's free game, playing the game. All right. <laughs> Bro, calm down, man. Ooh, hoo, hoo, hoo. Man, beef has been started. Oh, we're just getting some drama here in the final 10 days of the show. Meanwhile, can we talk about the runner getting to do skydiving? Next thing you know, she's going to be doing some Rocky Mountain climbing. Maybe try to last 2.7 seconds on a bull named Fu Manchu. Who knows? I guess it does make sense, though, since it is a scientifically proven fact that unicorns can fly. So, yeah, in her natural element. Well done. There you have it. The runner successfully completed her checkpoint and secured the coveted finale key by jumping out of a helicopter. And by doing so, she continues to protect that growing bounty, which is currently over $45,000. The question, though, is will anyone be able to catch her before July 30th? Or is she going to be making it all the way to the finish line and collecting what will end up being a record-setting bounty amount? So far, she's looking very strong. And by the way, if you correctly answered... Beaumont Ranch on the second America's cash task yesterday, and then you took it straight to the website www.go90.com slash the runner, then you may be one of these preliminary $500 winners. Come on over to the big board. Let's hand out some cash, shall we? Kyle H, Adam C, Steve K, Belight W, Jonathan P, Lay C, Kobe C, Renata D, Matthew L, and Fidai F. Congratulations, my friends. And I swear I'm not just calling you my friends because I want a piece of that money. I promise. Though, if you did want to share some with me, I would not be opposed to that idea. I'd be very generous of you guys. All right, America, when we began this chase, we promised you planes, trains, and automobiles. We've already given you trains, and we've given you plenty of time in automobiles, some of which we've even blown up. But last night, all the chaser teams took a flight from Dallas, Texas, all the way to our new city of... Ba -ba -ba -ba, Salt Lake City, Utah. So there you go, planes, trains, automobiles. And they are there right now, coming to us live with my very best friend in the whole wide world, the bolts to my nuts, Kaj Larson. Gonna let that one sit there for a second. Kaj, tell me how the chasers are doing in, in beautiful Salt Lake City. Oh, matter patter, when will our star-crossed bromance end? I don't know, but I do know that it's day 21, 21, 20 fun, and I'm about to issue a super fun challenge here. But before I do that, you should know that it's not all fun and games out here on the road. At the end of the day, this is competition, and it's a zero-sum game. So if somebody wins money, somebody else doesn't. And yesterday we saw a lot of sharp elbows being thrown. Let's talk to the teams about that right now and debrief it. So friend zone. Good morning. Good morning. You were throwing some sharp elbows yesterday. Uh, Raf, tell me what happened. Uh, well, I think everybody needs to know that this is a game show, but more importantly, this is a fierce competition with a lot of money at stake. And uh, for the record, we didn't target Bravo Square specifically. I told Jen beforehand that we were going to take any golf cart that was available. They just so happened to be there, and there was an empty golf cart. So we took it. I'm sure anybody or any of the other teams would have done it as well. It's all fair in love and war. Okay, I got you. But Jen, you didn't actually feel the same way because you didn't want to do it. 
I think, you know, part the softer side of me came out uh, because, you know, we've all grown to kind of become a little family. So part of me was feeling, you know, the Chase family and I, I was hesitant to do that. And I lost sight of, you know, kind of why we are here. And I just kind of went with it. He, Raphael looked at me, said, get on the cart. And I trust him and I got on the cart. <laughs> so, okay. All right. I get it. It's competition. Yeah. Uh, didn't result in a capture for you yesterday, but maybe today's the day. Yep. Hopefully. All right. Good luck. Thank Thanks. you. Bravo Square. Good morning. Um, so you guys were pissed yesterday. As, uh, I mean, as anybody would be, you know, and just like they said, um, it's all, all is fair, you know, and anybody would have taken it. Anybody would have been mad. And, you know, we do talk uh, before and after all the, you know, competitions is an obvious understanding of why we're here, you know, and there's there's no hard feelings at all. We talked before and after the capture, after uh, the events of the day had happened. There's there's no hard feelings. Uh, we all know we all would have done it. Uh, we're still family. I mean, we're, yeah, we're with friend zone. We're with everybody. Yeah, it's no big deal. Uh, it might happen the other way today. We don't know. So right. let's, let's just hope somebody catches somebody today. All right, all right. You've taken it down a couple degrees. Yeah. I respect that. It's that Texas heat. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Well, good luck today right. in Utah. All right, all stars. Hey. Um, what do you guys think? What, it's tough because you have to navigate this line between friendship and competition. How do you guys um, play that for yourselves? I mean, we just play it out like it's a competition. I'm sure maybe we would have taken the golf cart. Yesterday was a bit of a different situation. We're former track stars, so we thought yeah. we would just run the course. <laughs> a little we don't bit need no stinking running. golf carts. Yeah. Just sweat it out. <laughs> oh, yeah. Sweat it out. We're better with hand carts, actually. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, well, here's to hoping you do well on the, the challenge today. Thank you. Thanks. Good luck. Inshallah. Brother hey, Nature. Hey, guys. Yeah. <laughs> How you guys doing? Yeah. Good. You guys are always spreading love on the course. Um, what do you guys think? Is taking the card, is that in the, the realm, or is it, is it gameplay, or is it over the line? Um, you know, I don't think we would have personally done it, but at the end of the day, it is a contest, and you got to do what you got to do, and we're all competing against each other to you know, do the same thing. So uh, whatever competitive edge any teams think they can get, you know, like take it. Um, we but, we didn't yeah. take any yesterday, <laughs> which we, we, uh, we probably foot. should have. Yeah, <laughs> we we were told that uh, we were supposed to be on foot, so we were like jumping in golf carts. Like, should we do it? No, we're supposed to be on foot. So we ended up just uh, losing like ten pounds in sweat and uh, didn't catch a runner. So maybe we should have done something else. <laughs> All right. Well, I know you're thinking about that trade that just rolled by. It is not part of your challenge today, so <laughs> yes. don't sweat it. Right? They're all starting on an even playing field. Good luck okay. today, you guys. Thank you. Thank you. Um, programmers, how's it going, Gosh? Team Bravo Square or Team Friend Zone? That's, a, that's I'm a always putting you guys on the that's spot. That's a loaded are, question. Right? Yeah. We're very much Team Programmers. Um, I got you you're know, all we, about me. Yeah. Yeah, we we can't focus on like other people's relationships or interactions. Um, we're out here to win. You know, did they do the right thing? Maybe, maybe not. Whatever. It's we were lucky enough to commandeer a fast. Vehicle. We had the fastest golf cart, so. <laughs> and uh, whenever we moved on foot. We always took our keys out. Um, yeah. So I mean, it was we had the four like forethought to. Yeah. So out. if you think about it that way, like we expected someone to try to steal the golf cart, whether it was another chase team or even the runner. You know, we found her car and we took the keys with us because it's we were running game. out of the woods and leaving us stranded. All so. right. All right. Some caddy shack moves up in there. Yeah. All right. Good luck today, you guys. Thank you. Right. Sweet and savage. Yes. Um, how about you guys? Is it uh, is it Coolio to take the cart or not? We were lucky enough to find our own our golf own, cart, yeah. but knowing us, we'd probably be like, "Hey guys, you left your golf cart yeah. out here." Right. Yeah, knowing us, we wouldn't we wouldn't have jumped on. We would have just I don't kept running it, and not. I don't have think there's it. a right or wrong answer. To be honest, with you. you're playing a game and you are trying to win money, so. Yeah, and you guys, by definition, want to be both sweet and savage. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, we so have maybe both. Maybe we would have taken it. So I mean, we did know. take some cleaning ladies' golf carts. So. I'm we took not someone, sure if that's yeah. worse or better. <laughs> All right, you guys. Good luck today. Thank you. Thank you. Kill it. All right, it's time to light this candle, America. Let's issue today's challenge. Chasers, you are standing at the place. That's right. This is the place at the historic village in Salt Lake City, Utah. You, uh, in order to earn your clue for the runner's daily op, you have to take these hand carts behind you and deliver. That's right. You literally have to deliver the goods in the hand carts to the appropriate shop in this vast expansive area. Once you do that, the customer, the patron, will give you a stamp. Bring three of those stamps from your list back to me and exchange it for your clue. Got it? Got, Got, it. It. Got it. Get it. Got it. Good. Let's do this. Here we go. In three, two, 
One, hit it. Don't come in yet, guys. Don't come in. Go in. Oh yeah, so you can see our chase teams are off the old-fashioned way, hand carting it up. Uh, this is a really, really cool course that we have laid out, and I'll keep you updated on who's in the lead and who's lagging. Awesome, thanks, Kaj. I'm excited to see how this one plays out on the field. All right, my friends, America, it is now time to prove that you aren't just a bunch of pretty little Twitter handles. The chasers cannot figure out where the runner is headed unless you act. The answer to America's cash task isn't just a play along, it is a completely necessary part of this game. If you won't, if you don't answer it, the chasers won't be able to move on to the next part of the day. So get it done and send it to your favorite chaser team. America, here is your cash task. Will you know it when you see it? Find out when you act. America, the chasers are waiting. So, do you have what it takes to solve that cash task? Then get on it now, America. If you need to see it again, you can always find it on all of our social media. And when you have the answer, make sure that you call your parents and thank them for your beautiful brain. And after that awkward phone call, make sure you enter it at the website, www.go90.com slash the runner for your shot at winning $500. We'll have the winners a little bit later today. And we'll be back at 3 p.m. Eastern, 12 p.m. Pacific with the live updates on the location of the runner, the status of our determined chasers, and even more chances for you to leave your mark on this game. And finally, at 10 p.m., we'll be revealing the latest standings of that $50,000 leaderboard. But until then, America, the chase! continues I I would told America, you are coming into one of the most intense days of this chase. Welcome back to another epic day of the runner. I am Matt Pat coming to you live from Runner HQ and the countdown to this finale of the chase has officially begun. The graphic tells you that this is a big deal. The chasers have just 10 days left to get their hands on that bounty or the runner will be taking it all home for herself. And today is turning out to be one of the closest nail biters that we've had of this entire chase. The chasers are absolutely swarming on the runner right now. We'll have GPS a little bit later as things are starting to heat up in the salt flats. But first, today the chasers started their day at This Is The Place Heritage Village in Salt Lake City, Utah. Each chaser team was tasked to deliver a cart of goods to three specific locations within the park. Yeah, we told them the locations of the drop-offs, but not exactly where in that over 500 acre park those locations were. The way I see things, it's not a challenge unless someone gets lost. Right? Obviously. In order to receive their clue, each team needed to make three successful deliveries and return their cart to the starting point. And yet, at the end of all of that, they were met with a clue. We don't make it easy for these guys, I'm telling you. The clue looked like this. It was named for a man who was never there. Did he get his just deserts? It doesn't seem fair. See? It's deserts. Gotta watch the double S there underscore something, blank line. Based on his real life, George D may disagree. Many records have been set, one of them meteoric. Buckle up, hold on tight, things are getting prehistoric. And you probably guessed it, it looks like you guys need to fill in the missing line with your cash task answer. So here is what you did. You got an image that definitely looked like words, but they couldn't be read straight on. So, like the savvy taskers that you probably are at this point in the game, I don't know, you started taking screen grabs and doing a reverse Google image search for some mysterious language, or maybe you painstakingly searched every pixel of the letters for some hidden hyperlink to yet another fake website. Or even better yet, you called Langley asking for the most recently declassified CIA pages looking for a clue embedded in our deepest nation secrets. Well, if you did, 
you wasted a whole heck of a lot of your time. But hey, congratulations to you for trying to overthink the game at this point. Uh, all you had to do in this case was simply flip the image horizontally and then flip it once again vertically and the missing phrase became apparent. Yeah, we decided to take it a little bit easier on you guys today. Sometimes the hardest answers are the ones hidden in plain sight. What's more, this phrase completed the chaser's clue. So now the clue reads as follows. It was named for a man who was never there. Did he get his just deserts? It doesn't seem fair. Filling in the blank with your clue. While the real life C.F. Kane had visions of speed, based on his real life, George D. may disagree. Many records have been set, one of them meteoric. Buckle up, hold on tight, things are getting prehistoric. All right, so let's break this clue down and see where today's adventure is currently taking place. If we start with the line your act provided, it'll come together pretty quickly. C.F. Kane is short for Charles Foster Kane, the title character of the classic Citizen Kane. Kane is a character based on the actual real life newspaper mogul, William Randolph Hearst. There he is there. What a fun time he is. A nice, tall, cool glass of water right there. Well, where did Hearst have visions of speed? Well, a little Google searching will show that William Randolph Hearst was very interested in using one particular desert for a huge publicity stunt involving race cars. This desert also happened to be the very place that the infamous George Donner got stuck in on his way to California. Everything else in the clue is just a bunch of collection of, of fun trivia and little nods all leading to one place, the historic Bonneville Salt Flats. There they are. Some people start their day with a bagel and some coffee. I do a clue and three Diet Cokes. Ladies and gentlemen, it is time to get salty. We're going to the Salt Flats. So that is the answer to everyone's clue and that is where everyone is currently headed to right now. But before we get there, let's check in with this morning's GPS footage, shall we? So this morning you see everyone sprinting out of the gate very quickly. You see Brother Nature, Bravo Square, Bro Grammars out of the gate. Um, Friend Zone, Sweet and Savage, not far behind. Runner All Stars, all staying in a pack. Everyone very tightly together today. I can confirm for you that they were out within a series of minutes after receiving their chase. It was a very short one for them this morning. They were able to solve it very quickly. Their physical uh, abilities were on point this morning. They were getting out of there very fast, which is in turn putting a lot of pressure on our unicorn runner. Hopefully unicorns can run just as fast as they can grant magical wishes from their horn. We'll have to find out. But to give you a little bit more detail from the field, we have my brosif, Kaj Larson. Kaj, take us through the events of this morning. Yeah, Matt, Pat, interesting game today. Uh, a challenge that was a mixture of brains and brawn with emphasis on the brawn. You could see some of the teams struggled with pulling these carts the old fashioned way by hand. Um, once they were able to successfully deliver their items, get the appropriate stamps, and then return them to me to receive their clue, you saw not surprisingly, programmers who are always strong competitors come out near the top of the pack, Brother Nature. They all seem to do really well on this challenge. The other end of the pack was Sweet and Savage, who struggled pulling this cart. You could hear them huffing and puffing when they came up. That put them about a good five to seven minutes behind the lead team. They'll have to make up all of that time on the road. Back to you in the studio. All right, thanks a lot, Kaj. Yeah, so even though five to seven minutes might not seem like a long time, today is one of those days where a matter of minutes could make or break this chase. The runner is very close to where everyone is currently, so those minutes really are going to add up whether or not she gets caught today. But obviously, it was a very physical challenge, so how did the teams deal with it? Well, let's check in with Friendzone, who are telling you a little bit about the physical exhaustion of dealing with this morning's chaser challenge. <clears throat> it's training. Trains you that thing's not light. Thank God for inertia. <laughs> that thing is not light. And then going uphill at the very end, kill it. It was hard. Raphael definitely had the cart for most of the time, but that hill at the end was definitely difficult. So, but we did it. Um, it was hard. I don't really have upper body strength, so a lot of it was trying to just use legs, but I think all the teams did really well. It was challenging for all of us. But, you know. Uh-oh, these guys took the wrong turn. Oh no. Damn, that absolutely sucks. Huh. 
So real quick, it's, it bears mentioning every day the chasers start their day, they never know what the challenge is going to entail, right? Some of them are more luck-based, some of them are more mental and puzzle-based, and some of them, like today, are much more physically oriented. So really deciding who is going to be the lead teams for every day. That being said, I have one question, which is who turned around? Who got caught headed in the wrong direction? Well, spoiler alert, it was the programmers, but it might not be for the reasons you expect. Programmers having a little bit of trouble with some old time technology. I'll let them explain. We solved everything pretty quickly. First one's out. Don't right. know where we're going. James is working on the clue back here. But now we're yeah. stuck behind a train. Is this the only way out? No. It sucks. It sucks to be stuck behind this train. Everything's oh. beautiful. I'm moving back. No, 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 no. Dude, look at them. I need you to pull up, pull up the map. I don't know where the hell we're going. Just put me on the interstate. You're on the map, Alex. Do you want to go south or north? Put me on the interstate. That means nothing to me. I don't know Just anything. Just get about. me out of here. What interstate? I'm trying to figure out where we're going. Just say Salt Lake City. Oh, my God. Here goes the tapes. See, I told you I just need to back up. Alex, we're close. That's the parking lot. No, right? it's not. The gate is locked. safely. <laughs> That's nice. Always making sure to remind the partner to drive safely. So very clearly getting a bit frustrated with trains. They haven't had a lot of luck with trains lately. Uh, between the, the challenge earlier this week where they were kind of last to get out of the train depot, today caught behind the train, programmer's Achilles heel is definitely their experience with trains. Uh, and so even though they were one of the first out of the gate today, that little train mishap put them behind, uh, allowing some of the other teams to sneak into the lead. Which brings us to Brother Nature, who have uh, a little thanks to give to uh, programmers for their success this morning. Here, here's the guys. Guys, we were the second ones out behind programmers. The programmers got stuck behind a train, so we were the first one to leave the area. What is up with you guys in trains? You, is, you guys okay? <laughs> you get behind the slowest trains possible. I feel bad for you guys. Um, yeah, and then All Stars were basically pulling out the same time and then the rest of the teams were probably close behind but we're in route and we're feeling good and we're excited to be in the west you. so there you go brother nature first out of the gates officially because they didn't get stuck behind a train and remember small things like that on legs like today really make a big difference it is a matter of minutes separating sometimes the runners or the runner from the chaser team so it's going to be a tight one and that small delay might make a big difference in fact, it might make a $47,000 difference for the programmers. We'll have to see, though, more on that later as we'll check in with the GPS in a few minutes. But now it is time to find out what kind of runner intel my favorite bandwidth junkies in the universe have for me today. If it's none other than the social media squad. How are you guys doing? That means good. All right, yeah, <laughs> I, I can feel the forced enthusiasm coming my way. Thank you. Uh, Salty. Are you salty? Salty in honor of today's challenge? Just trying to support them out there. I, I get it. Uh, but before, speaking of salt, though, yes. this morning we saw that there was a lot of salt uh, from yesterday. There was like a beef going on right now between Bravo Square and Friend Zone about the whole stolen golf cart, right? Yes. A lot of people were commenting on that, giving their opinions. Um, and, you know, the chase teams are out there acting in the moment. They're yeah. trying to win money. So yeah. it is a tough call. So yeah, it's, it's, it's very much a, a divisive issue. And we have a video coming in of both Friend Zone and Bravo Square talking a little bit more about their thoughts on that situation from yesterday. Over 45 k today. You know what I mean? Yeah. 30K on the line yesterday. We did what we had to do. You know what I mean? The golf carts didn't belong to anybody. We saw an opportunity. We ran with it. We assumed that any other team would have done it as well. So <clears throat> we're just playing the game to win just as much as everybody else. Yep. <laughs> we are financially in a different position, and it, I guess it put us in a different mindset where now fairness is an option. But long story short, we definitely understand that, you know, if it's 10 days left, we haven't won anything. Stealing golf carts isn't, you know, an obscene thing. If, the, if we were in second, if we had for the programmer's money, and friend zone had our money and friend zone did that to us then we could be like you guys aren't happy like what's your problem 
Yeah, no, and it's, it's very true. Bravo so Square has $150,000 that they've already won. Yeah. Friend Zone has been always the bridesmaid, never the bride. They're always, you know, number two, number three team on the scene of these runner captures. Yeah. So I can see them getting a little bit antsy toward the back half as we wound, wind down the last 10 days. Exactly. It's getting tight I mean, for them. Time is running out here. It is. So, so you guys asked Twitter for a poll. We did. So we put out a poll asking people at home, what would you guys do? Yeah. Would you take the golf cart? 50% said heck yes, huh, Okay. 15% said no, don't need it, and then 35% only the helicopter. I'm surprised that only 35% of people only wanted the helicopter, right? right? Like, Well, a lot of people were freaked out about skydiving. <laughs> they wouldn't. I get it, I get it. So so people understand that this is a game and that yes. at the end, you know, any advantage that you have is gonna, you know, make you $50,000 And richer. like you said, time is running out. They want to win some money. I don't blame them. It's true, you know? I, don't, I don't blame them either. So a little bit of saltiness on the field today, both literal and figurative, which brings me to Rakeek. <laughs> I gotta ask because you, you're surveying the fan art scene. Yes. And so we could use a little bit of love, a Definitely. little bit of uplifting positivity today. Exactly. So what do we so have coming in? People are killing it with fan art. So this one was done by Kit Kat, and it's Sweet and Savage, like mixed in with Pokemon Go. Yeah, they're, they're, they're <laughs> looking like a regular Misty. Yeah, they got like Pokemon Go merch yeah, on. Yeah, they, they're rocking the, the Pokemon Go outfit. I like it. Captured. The only Pokemon they're interested in, in, in capturing is the runner. Yeah, exactly. What else so we got? Like, um, next we have for Brother Nature, it's their positivity with the unicorn, <laughs> unicorn <laughs> horn as a straw. It's so cute. I love this. Oh, it's, it's the runner. See, I thought, it, is it the straw or are they just steeping the magic out of the, the oh, runner's unicorn maybe horn? Maybe it's both. A Allowing it to diffuse into the, the positivity. Is, yeah. Right? Um, next is a little short video that Mary did for Friend Zone. Oh, it's that motion. Yeah, let's check that out. The runner turns into a hashtag, hashtag turns into a heart. And a heart. Yeah, it's so wow, creative. Wow, that's adorable. They're so creative. That it's is so crazy. cool. And stop motion, stop motion video is it's not, not easy. easy. Exactly. Like that took some time, time. to put together. Mm -hmm. So so shout out to, to her. I hope that she gets some chaser cash exactly. out of that. Not, not that I can affect who you give your chaser <laughs> cash to, friend zone, but pro tip. And now Lady Orange, she was hungry, but then she was also thinking about bro grammars. Yeah, I, I get it, man. She's like, let me mix it in a bit. Let me put them together. That's and great. Bro grammar pancakes. The best part of waking up, bro grammars on your plate. Exactly. What else? Uh, next is a video of... Um, Bravo Square. Okay. Somebody made them plushy versions of their face. Whoa! <laughs> so oh, that's so and, and their cool. hats and everything. Yes. What is it? it looks They're like an so avocado. Happy. It's like a it's like a stress reliever. Yeah. I bet I bet Raphael wants one of these and he can like right. squeeze it aggressively, <laughs> being like, Yeah, I stole your golf cart and I would steal it again too if I could. Next we have um uh, art done for All Stars, Runner All Stars. Looks kind of like a, like a watercolor like, yeah. or something. That's throwback, cool. throwback art for them. Yeah, so some like straight out of the 1990s. Yeah, exactly. Like, it's like a TV show about the stars. In West Philadelphia, born and raised. I saw Team Runner <laughs> exactly. All Stars spending most of my days. Uh, ah, Chang Sketcher. Chang Sketcher is on it. Like the whole team, angry unicorn, like in the corner, looking crazy. This is so good. Yeah. So Cheng, so Cheng Sketcher actually took the image that we showed yesterday of all the Chaser teams and recreated it, but then that is an aggressive yeah. unicorn, I don't man. know. Cheng Sketcher is, like, crazy talented. Awesome. Well, so good. Cheng Sketcher, phenomenal. <laughs> uh, Annie, meanwhile. Cheng, Cheng Sketcher. So there's some positivity the going on. Talk to me a little bit about what's going on between the Chaser teams. Well, they're just friends. Okay. And it's not just in a zone. It's... Throughout the nation. Okay. Yeah. So what, friends everywhere. So what came in? Well, uh, the programmers had a little more than pancakes on their plate yesterday. <laughs> okay. Bree and Steve, the runner all stars, put the programmers through a little runner boot camp. Okay. So we have a video coming in of them doing a runner boot camp. Let's check it out. Think you have what it takes to be a runner? Sorry, yes, sir. <laughs> oh, <my God. laughs> no. No. Ah, let's go, boys. Come on, read your check it, check it, check it. Yeah. I love it! Oh my gosh, that is incredible. We, so we've given them escape vehicles of planes, trains, and automobiles as of today. 
But uh, apparently the Hobby Horse is now the latest <laughs> escape vehicle to join the roster. That is very, very cool. A lot of fun videos coming in from everyone. So we've only got 10 days left. At this point, I shouldn't be needing to explain to you how huge all of your social media involvement is in the creation and maintenance and ultimate end result of this game. But to make sure that you fully understand even 20 days into this chase, let's give out some chaser cash. So who have the chasers decided to give their daily thousand dollars to as a thanks for having their back? Well, thanks for asking, said no one in particular. These are the preliminary winners from yesterday's chase. Maybe it's you. Bravo Square thanked at Mandel Webb for solving the second act and sending them on their way to the Beaumont Ranch. Mighty kind of you, Mandel Webb. Mighty kind. Brother Nature tweeted, Today we lived the Texas dream. And then they proceeded to give their chaser cash to at Flaming Gecko. So Texas dreams apparently involve setting reptiles on fire. Huh, that's that's cool, I guess. Friendzone gave their chaser cash to at Air for Andy. And for their generosity, they received a special thank you from Air for Andy's dog, Mr. Jaeger. Which I guess answers the question of who's a good boy? Who's a good boy? Mr. Jaeger's a good boy for getting his owner a thousand new dollars. Yep, that's my job as host. The programmers thanked at Hey Savjay uh, for all of her help and said they couldn't believe it. Well, believe it, you just won a thousand dollars. Sweet and Savage thanked at Amanda Furling uh, for her help and support, which, if you calculate it out, works out to be five hundred dollars for the help and five hundred dollars for support. Not a bad split there. And the runner all stars rewarded at spokes underscore with their chaser cash for his awesome fan art. There you go. As we just saw, awesome fan art coming in all the time and very frequently getting their drawers, their artists, a thousand dollars for the trouble. Not a bad return on the investment. Now then, the runner also has her eyes on the prize too, and she's paying off Team Runner to keep her in this thing until the very end. It is time for some runner cash. The runner gave her thousand dollars too. Two at 57 underscore man underscore for a sketch of a unicorn they made. So the runner's identification with the unicorn has been drawn a lot of attention and a lot of love on the Twitterverse. So uh, will the unicorn keep running? We're about to answer that question right now. Let's check it out on the GPS board. So this is coming in from the salt flats as we speak. Um, as you can tell, we're having to zoom in really close. That is how tight this chase is today. All the teams very closely gathered, all of them on this massive expanse of salt, uh, all looking for the runner. And as you can imagine, there's nothing here. It's just a bunch of flatlands and a bunch of salt. So if the runner is here, they're going to be able to see her and then it's, then it just becomes a foot race. That is why I've been saying this whole episode, this is a matter of minutes. Those couple minutes might make the difference. And as we've seen in the past, some of these chaser teams, they are fast on their feet. Did you see Bravo Square take down uh, Fear the Beard last time two chases ago? That was intense. They, they got some legs on them. So that's what the latest is coming in from the field. But we also have some videos of them on the flats as we speak coming in via the social media feeds. So first we start with programmers in the middle of the salt flats doing their run. All right, we are here on the salt flats. We can only be on foot and they literally go forever. There's Alex. It's going to be a long day. It is going to be a long day. There's a lot of running involved today. Hey, after we sent you guys to the candy shop the day before, it's time to run off some of those calories. Meanwhile, here's Friend Zone showing off their running, getting salty. What? Too bad Mango Legs Isaiah still isn't in this chase. This probably would have been a good day for him. Uh, and finally, we'll wrap it up with Runner All-Stars. Uh, this is former runner himself on the Salt Flats uh, asking for some help. Help me, Tom Cruise. Help me, Oprah Winfrey. Help us find the runner. I want the runner. I can't feel my legs. Uh, <laughs> If Oprah Winfrey really were to help, and you get a runner, and you get a runner, and you get some bounty, and you get some bounty. So there you go, everyone having a, a fun time, but also a very physically exhausting time on the Salt Flats today. That means, though, America, it is time for you to act. The second cash task is currently live, and its answer will be taking the chasers right to the location of the new runner's daily op. America, here's your clue. 
You may not be going there, but you can feel like you're in the middle of the action. Solve this act and help your favorite chaser team. Act 2 is here. So good luck, America. Solve the clue and win yourself some cash. Then send it to the chaser team of your dreams so that they know you have their back. We'll be back later tonight at 10 p.m. Eastern to announce the names of this morning's Act 1 winners, as well as the latest front runners on that $50,000 MVP leaderboard, as well as any updates that we have of the intense chase that's going down on the Salt Flats right now as we speak. You're not going to want to miss that one. But until then, the chase continues. See you then. And you get a social media tweet, and you get a social media tweet. Hello, America, and welcome to your runner evening update. I'm Pat Matt, if you read that wrong, and today the runner made her next step towards the finale, barreling down the main ways and back roads just outside of Salt Lake City and out into the unforgiving heat of the Bonneville Salt Flats. But the chasers aren't interested in seeing this runner make it to the finale. They want to capture, and they want it now. So did they get what they want, or did Salt Lake belong to the runner? Let's find out, shall we? The Chaser's Day starts at This Is The Place Heritage Village, a pioneer-themed park in Salt Lake City, Utah. Here, the life of the Old West is preserved, and a number of historical buildings from the past continue to exist today. Each team must make three deliveries to five potential buildings, using a delivery list and a cart loaded with provisions. Each time they make a delivery, they'll receive a stamp, and although they'll know which building they're delivering to, they could have a hard time finding it. Once they have three stamps, they'll receive their clue. But to uncover the runner's destination, they'll need one more line, and that's where America comes in. Three, two, one, hit it! Got it? Yep. You need me to help? Nope. So we need to go to the Duke's house. We need to go to the tin place. All right. I'm gonna figure out where the hay goes. Yeah, I'm trying to use myself as the brake. Go, don't go through that, Heather. You can't stop it. At that same moment, the runner receives her daily off and sets off for her destination. Go to the end of the access road in the Bonneville Salt Flats International Speedway. Park your car near the sign and go northeast on foot towards the vehicles in the distance. Inside one of the first three vehicles is your checkpoint key and the key to your getaway vehicle. This key will start one of the three remaining vehicles. And sets off for her destination. We need to go to the stable. We need to go to the tinsmith. Drug store. Fresh head. Right here, please. Thank you. Good morning, Mr. Blackson. Get it all out, dude. Jupiter is down this way. It was on me. No, it wasn't. Yes, it was. I swear on everything. Woo! Yeah. Thank you, sir. Delivered. Good morning, brother. This is you? Yep. You know where the tin shop is? That's right. Dude, look on the map. You can see that this area is really expansive. It's really vast. So they have to go house to house, and they have to match the right good to the right shop. I think we're supposed to keep going this way. Are you the print shop? Yeah. OK, keep going. Turn. Turn. So Going through. You good? Yeah, let's go. <clears throat> Interesting game today. There's a physical component to the challenge that's actually carrying those big hand carts, so we'll see how that all plays out for them. Watch out for this turn. I got it. You see it? Uh, yeah, let's not on the left. Okay. I said, look, apron. Okay. Sorry, we'll keep... Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Hey, delivery. Bella, hey, right here. I know. Hey, drop. Thank you. Got it. Let's go. Pull, pull, pull. Cotton? Yeah. Thanks so much. We got it. Thank you, ma'am. Yeah. Here you are. Bye. Thank you. Nice driving, Tex. Come on. The challenge has been underway for about five minutes. You saw right away Brother Nature kind of rip out of the gates. And now, coming right up, the 
the path here. You have programmers in the front, all stars behind them, right behind them on, on the side here. Brother Nature, see if they got the right clues. Three. One, two, three. Good to go. Yes, sir. Good. One, two, three. Here's your clue. Good to go. Christmas. Back. You have three teams that have already solved their challenge for today. Here comes the, the next one right here. Friend zone. Check. Pop. Fifth team coming up. Bravo squared. Yeah. How's that car? You guys hard? Here you guys go. So one of the challenges of these challenges is that even though you're physically tired, you have to keep your cognitive skills up. And you can see after dragging this cart around the course that some of the teams are so tired they forgot to actually receive their clue in exchange for the sheet. Yeah, I figured we were, I knew we were going anyway. <laughs> this challenge was obviously difficult for Sweden Savage. His carts are heavy, um, but they're pretty good at leveraging their fan base to make up time on the road. Thank you. Good to go. Wow, I knew today was gonna be close, but this is intense. We'll find out what happened next, first thing tomorrow at 12 p.m. Eastern. But first, the ramification of Team Friend Zone's highly competitive cart borrowing strategy in Grandview, Texas yesterday are still being felt by the teams. The teams have a lot of time to think about the events of the game as they make their way between cities, and this event is certainly no exception. But lucky for us, we happen to have the candid footage of the uncensored conversations that ensued. So let's be a fly on the car door, shall we? Check it out. We're, we're two thirds of the way in. I think everybody's at this point looking for something to just give us that, <clears throat> that little edge. 30K on the line yesterday. We did what we had to do, you know what I mean? The golf carts didn't belong to anybody. We saw an opportunity, we ran with it. We assumed that any other team would have done it as well. So <clears throat> we're just playing the game to win just as much as everybody else. Well, I feel like if I were to do that, I would just be like, feel really bad about it. So I feel like it would affect, I mean, it would affect my performance, you know? Yeah. It's evident that Rafael has no soul. Morally, he has work to do. <laughs> if you're gonna do something like that to try to like get forward in life, then that's not not the right way to do it. All. Yeah, it works with every everyday life, right? Like you could kind of like do little shortcuts like that and like take things from other people to get ahead, right? Yeah. Like, or you could just do it on your own, or you know, and figure it out on your own. Like how you do anything is how you do everything. That's kind of my motto. Here's my thing about cart. If I didn't have a golf cart, I probably would have stolen that golf cart. Oh, 100%. <laughs> okay. As long as you're all on the same page. Bravo Square is already up 150. We're trying to get a little love, too. That's all. We just want a little love. I just want to win. <laughs> very interesting to hear the team's candid thoughts on what was, for all intents and purposes, a smart, strategic, and completely legal move in this game. Remember, teams, the more time that you argue about each other, the more you're helping the runner escape. Speaking of, once all of that drama had been hashed out, it was time to get back to the business at hand, solving the clues and finding the runner. And that's exactly what these teams do best. Nobody has a sense for what direction we're heading in. So I think teams may be a little more hesitant to get on a freeway in a direction. The clue is, it was named for a man who was never there. Did he get his just desert? It doesn't seem fair. While the real life CF Kane had visions of speed, based on his real life, George D may disagree. Many records have been set, one of them meteoric. Buckle up, hold on tight, things are getting prehistoric. Everyone's name is Charles Foster Kane, but it's a fictional character. But it says, based on his real life, George D may disagree. So I'm trying to figure out who the, him, the real Ch Charles Foster Kane, please stand up. CF Kane, Citizen Kane. Citizen Google Kane. real life Citizen Kane, and then it'll come up with it the right way. It says many records have been set, one of them meteoric. Bonneville Salt Flats is famous for uh, a bunch of speed records are set, set there, and I know that Bonneville, the, like it's like kind of like a funny little trivia chestnut that Bonneville Salt Flats, that Bonneville was never there. I'm about 94% sure, and if I get a 94 on a test, I'm, I'm okay with that, so we're going to Bonneville Salt Flats. 100% Bonneville Salt Flats, which is like known for racing, speed racing, because it's just so flat, you know? 
Bonneville Salt Flats International Speedway. Oh, that's cool. All right, Salt Flats Road, Wendover, Utah. Go to Bonneville Salt Flats, whatever that is. These guys are getting really, really good and solving these clues and figuring out where the runner is headed super fast. Which begs the question, how does one get to be a chaser? How did our now beloved teams earn the right to fight for their bounty? Well, thousands of people across the country sent in videos showing off their different strengths. And we thought it would be fun at this point in the game to take a look at the videos that our chase team sent in months ago. Starting with everyone's favorite, Island Brothers, Team Brother Nature. I'm Koa Smith. I'm Travis Smith. And we're brothers from Kauai, Hawaii. And we really come from just raw nature and yeah. the ocean. We spent more time in the ocean than we did on land growing up. Koa is an amazing athlete. Last year, he got voted to be top five best surfers under 20. Well, Travis is a super successful model. He walks for Versace. Would you say you're more street smart or book smart? Kind of more jungle smart, actually. Now that I'm not like in the ocean every day, obviously, because I'm in New York, I feel like it can really apply that competitiveness into whatever I, I need to do. We're very resilient and any problem, we team up and we figure it out no matter what it is. And we just bounce ideas off each other. We love brainstorming ideas and what the best solution is for those ideas. We do meditations and we also do this breathing technique called Wim Hof. As far as like tracking and stuff goes, that's like my thing. I started bow hunting when I was like 12 years old for wild pigs. We really make it happen. We're professional adventurers. Yeah. <laughs> Very cool to see the origin story of how Team Brother Nature came to be. I'm really looking forward to seeing the rest of the Chase Team's entry videos in the coming days. But first, let's find out which of you salt lickers, and I mean that in the most affectionate way possible, came up with today's Act One answer and won yourselves $500 for entering the missing line of the chaser's clue, which was, well, the real life C.F. Kane had visions of speed. So let's find out who correctly entered that answer at go90.com slash the runner and earn themselves $500 for it. America, here are your preliminary $500 winners. Let's walk this way, shall we? Pulling it up on the big board, Jerry S., Spencer D., Jenna M., Maria H., Alexis C, Lysi B, Christian C, Kaya C, Caroline H, and Tommy S. Congratulations, all you winners. Give yourself 500 pats on the back, but make sure that you stretch first. Stretching is important. We don't want any of you pulling muscles when you just won $500. Now then, let's mosey on over to the $50,000 MVP leaderboard where runner players across the country are tweeting their fingers off for a chance to win up to $20,000 in cash. At this very moment, our top hashtagger is at Fadaifus with an astonishing score of 3,523 points. Didn't I call that the other day that Fadaifus was working his way up the rankings? I told Anyway, all of these awesome players are strategically using the hashtag TheRunnerSweepstakes, all one word, to earn themselves points via tweets, likes, and retweets. Sorry. All of these points will serve as virtual entries into our sweepstakes, which is happening on the day before the finale. We'll be giving out $50,000 worth of cash prizes overall, so get to hashtagging people. For all of the details, make sure that you're going to www.go90.com slash TheRunner to read all about it. And if you follow at the runner go 90 on both Twitter and Instagram, and make sure that you also like us on Facebook as well, you may not have won yourself any money for it, but you will have won my undying affection. And we all know which is worth more, don't we? Join us again tomorrow to find out the fate of the runner as she continues to hone in on the finale. The chasers, however, are dead set on stopping her, so it is going to be a very interesting final days of this chase. Don't miss a second of it as we pick up right here where we left off tomorrow at 12 p.m. Eastern time. Until then, America, the chase continues. Good night, everybody.